writer's block, data analysis paralysis, literature review lethargy. All PhD students struggle with this kind of stuff because a PhD involves complex brain straining things. But there is one thing that you can do to get unstuck when you find yourself in these stuck situations. And that one thing is creative walking. Yeah, creative walking. Creative walking is actually a thing. And we are going to learn all about it in this video. So by the time you get to the end of the video, you will know what creative walking is and you will be ready to go on your first creative walk to help you smash through whatever block is getting in your way at the moment. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and over the last 20 years, I have supported many PhD students on their doctoral journeys. And I've got a PhD myself, so I know exactly what it feels like to be stuck, to hit a brick wall, to just grind to a halt. And one of the most important skills you can learn as a PhD student is how to deal with being stuck. You can't prevent it, it's just going to happen. But how you respond when it does happen will determine how long you stay stuck for. Continuing to go at the problem, staying at your laptop until you figured it out, that ain't gonna work. Constantly, intensively focusing on a problem you're trying to solve is the worst way to solve it. I learned that the hard way. But creative walking is brilliant and it's a tool that really needs to be part of your toolkit. So let's take a look at what it is. So first up, what is creative walking? Well, creative walking is a specific type of walking that stimulates creative thinking. You close your laptop, you leave your home or your office, and you go for a nice walk. By going for a walk, you are changing your environment and you're creating a new optic flow. And by optic flow, I'm referring to the visual motion that you experience as you move through the world, as you go on your walk, as you move through a different environment. And here is some footage from a creative walk that I did earlier this week. When you are introducing a new optic flow, when you are changing your optic flow, you stimulate different areas of your brain. And this essentially leads to you developing ideas and having thoughts that would never have come to you had you just kept your optic flow the same by sitting in front of your laptop. And also when you're outside, when you're in motion, you're able to switch between thinking about the detail and thinking about the context, thinking about the bigger picture. And this is something that is quite difficult to do when you are sat in front of your laptop. Right now, you have got so many fantastic, brilliant ideas, and they are just sitting beneath your level of consciousness. Now, when you get out, when you get into motion, when you start moving, you will find that those ideas bubble up to the surface. But if you carry on sitting at your laptop, they are kind of trapped and they're not gonna come out. It's the motion, it's the movement, it's the optic flow that encourages all of that stuff from the subconscious into the conscious. Also, going for a walk is a mood booster. It actually makes you feel better. It often calms you down and, and stops you feeling frantic. And we can tend to get into this really kind of anxious, frantic mindset when we're struggling to solve a problem and we're just getting even more annoyed with ourselves about it. We can get this like, Ugh, going on. But when we go for a walk, we find that that often lifts. And this is especially the case if you're going for a walk in nature. You know, if you're around trees, if you're around a green area, because the pace of nature is generally calmer than the pace at which we live our lives, isn't it? So how do you do a creative walk? Well, I've already said the most important thing, and that is if you are able to access a green space, go and do your creative walk in a green space, a park, a wooded area, a nature reserve, just somewhere around trees and flowers and animals and lovely things. But even if those things aren't immediately available to you, it is better to get out and go for a walk around a busy block than it is to just sit at your laptop trying to hammer away at this problem. In terms of the length of your creative walk, I'd recommend about 15 minutes to start with, but you can go for longer if you want. When you're out for your walk, make sure you're walking at a slow, relaxed pace rather than a really fast, sweaty, cardio, heart rate pumping one. Because when we have got elevated heart rates, when our bodies are working really, really hard, our capacity for problem solving is quite significantly reduced because to be frank, there's a lot of other stuff going on that our body is trying to do. There's just too much noise, it's too busy. So slow, relaxed pace. And in terms of the problem you're trying to solve, whatever that is, writer's block, data analysis, paralysis, whatever, 
try not to focus too intensely on that problem don't try and kind of get yourself to a point where you think i have to solve this problem on this walk don't do that because you're putting too much pressure on yourself that way instead just kind of think loosely about it allow your thoughts to meander and wander around the problem try and hover above it and i know this all sounds rather abstract coming from me right now but it will make a lot more sense when you are out on your walk so think loosely about the problem don't put loads of pressure on yourself don't intricately analyze and focus on it just keep it there keep it in your mind but don't fixate on it this is going to make a lot more sense once you actually start moving but what is going to happen is that your brain will start working in a different way because your optic flow is different and the kind of things that are going to come to mind when you're walking when you're in motion they would never have come to you when you were just sat in front of your laptop because you kick-started some different processes in your mind by getting up and by getting moving and getting in motion you'll discover links that you haven't thought about before different ways of looking at particular elements of the problem and when this process starts happening when you're on your walk you want some way of capturing those thoughts of capturing those ideas so the thing that i recommend to people is that they take a notebook or a dictaphone with them on their walk i tend to prefer a notebook because the walk that i go on the route that i take when i want to go on a creative walk there are quite a lot of benches along that route so i know that i can just sit down and i can jot something down in my notebook but you might also want to try a dictaphone if you're not a notebook kind of person or if there aren't opportunities to write things down. So dictaphone, standalone device, it's a voice recorder. You basically just talk into it on your walk. Now, some of you might be thinking, can't I just use my voice, uh, bleh, my voice app? I can't get my words out today. Can't I just use my voice app on my phone or my notes app on my phone? And I would say, well, yeah okay worst case scenario if you don't want to use a notebook if you don't have a dictaphone but the problem with taking your phone with you on your walk is that it's going to be binging and boinging and notifications are going to be going off and even if they're not when you take that phone out and you you go to start typing your notes and or go to start dictating the temptation is going to be there to, to dip into things that are on your phone you're going to be distracted by your phone so I highly recommend not using a phone and instead taking a notebook or taking a dictaphone your creative walk is an opportunity to spend time with your own thoughts okay not other people's thoughts relayed to you via your phone so to sum up creative walking you go outside you get your body in motion you get moving and that movement stimulates creative thinking through changing your optic flow you unleash ideas, you make connections that you would never have made if you just sat at your laptop. In terms of how to do it, firstly, try and do it in nature, a nice green space like a park or a wooded area. Secondly, walk slowly, have a nice relaxed pace. Thirdly, try and be out for at least 15 minutes. And fourthly, ensure that you take something with you to record your thoughts, like a notebook or a dictaphone. So are you going to try it? Have you tried it before? Let me know in the comments and I will be back with more study tips in the next video.